in San Francisco, the bay, the city by the bay, something like that. I left my heart in it, but I'm still here, so my heart is here in San Francisco, so I didn't really leave it because I'm still here, but I'm flying out tomorrow, so the story will change then. Awesome. Tune and in. As far as uh, like how to get a hold of you, you know, defuse.com yeah, on the go. web. Yeah, there you go. DJDefuse.com. And also MySpace slash Defuse, D F U S E. Did I spell that right? D F U, yeah. D F U S E. Yes. Um, what's your genre? What kind of music do you play? What's your style? You know, I play everything. Uh, basically, uh, whatever's funky, whatever's got a good bass line, but it varies all the way from Deep House all the way up into uh, Progressive House. I call it Progressive Funk, but it's basically anything that's got kind of a funky edge to it, but maybe has a little bit more on the top to make you think a little bit, give a little bit of spirituality. I'm not afraid of melody, I'm not afraid of lyrics, uh, vocals. Uh, it's just a matter of having those two elements together, something for the dance floor and then something for your mind at the same time. What, um, what would you say are some of your influences, or how did you get into DJ and what brought you here? Uh, well, I mean, it was one of those things where uh, I felt like the live music scene for me had kind of run its course. I was in Austin, Texas, uh, trying to hammer out, get, keep my band together, and nothing was really clicking, nothing was working out. And so eventually what happened is that um, the band broke up. I was sad. I went to a club one night and had that quintessential club experience, and uh, that was it. I just thought it was such an amazing uh it was like a whole new uh, scene that I never even heard of or realized what was going on. And what I loved is that it was just so positive. Whereas, and a lot of times in the, in the live music scene, you have a lot of people that are competing against each other and a lot of negative energy that associates that. With the DJ world, it seemed like everybody was very open and accepting of everything um, and new people and everything like that. And so uh, the fact that I didn't have to rely on live musicians, that I could just go in and be a DJ and perform the whole thing myself and not depend on anybody else, made it uh, you know, really appealing. Plus, I just love the music. You know, I really got into it. And so when I picked up turntables and realized it was an instrument just like turntables were, or drums were, I should say, uh, I was hooked. Or you can go uh, MySpace slash, no, I'm not even going to do that. DJDefuse.com. You can link to MySpace direct from there to my page. So definitely check it out and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Awesome. What's going on? This is Defuse. I'm here in San Francisco to do a show at Ruby Sky tonight. Uh, definitely check out my website. It's DJDefuse.com. And uh, looking forward to it. it. Should be a good night. Tell me a little bit about the evolution of uh, transitioning from playing predominantly, you know, CDs and records to bringing musical elements in. A little bit of background. Um, well, really, uh, I was a, uh, you know, live music, uh, I was in bands for years and years, uh, and mostly industrial music. For I had a band called Culture Industry in Texas, uh, which we had slightly regional success. It was mostly, we played just in Austin, and every club we played in was legendarily shut down six months after we played across the board. So it got to be where we'd put every club out of business. And uh, it was time to, to do something different. Uh, but basically, um, I, I, was, I was just a drummer my whole life. That's what I was really into. And when I, when I went to a club after the band had broken up and had that quintessential club experience and saw what an amazing uh, uh, scene and, and community it was, uh, then I just started becoming a DJ. And I really didn't play the drums for years and years because turntables kind of filled that gap. Um, and so when uh, Roland uh, came out with V-Drums and came out with the Hand Sonic, it was the first time that actual an electronic piece of equipment could actually mimic and, and, and feel like a real drum. And so the fact that I could pack it in my suitcase, I was like, well, cool, I can kind of now get back into what I love doing, it, which is kind of making a performance aspect of the show. So um, that's kind of where it went from there. Tell me something, uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, when DJing, as a professional is really good and when it's not so good? Uh, well, it's not good when you're just like, you show up to a club and uh, the promoter hasn't worked it right or the weather's weird or something's happened and the club's like not even half full. That's rough. Um, and uh, so you get on the decks and you're trying, but a lot of times with the room half full, you can you could bring Jesus Christ himself on stage and it's not going to really make a difference. People want to be around other people. So the, that gets rough. The travel gets rough. I mean, I'm away all the time, you know. I mean, I get home, I do studio work all week, and then I jump on a plane on Friday, generally return on Sunday if I'm lucky. Uh, and so that can get, that can kind of wear on you a bit. Um, 
Was that the no? Do you want the we want the positive aspects, or we were just doing the bad aspects? It doesn't matter. I cut it up. Okay. <laughs> uh, the good stuff, uh, obviously, is just man out there performing for people, and and uh, hopefully giving people a musical experience like you get when you listen to the music. That's really the whole reason uh, that we do, you know, what we do is just to share the music the way it makes us feel. Hopefully, we can share that with people, and they can get the same experience and the same. Uh, you know, I, I, music for me is that's it for me. I mean, you know, when I basically way back in high school, I realized that there was nothing else on this this planet I'd rather be doing, and the fact that I'm able to go out there and do it, it's a dream come true. So every day is a, is a day I'm thankful for. What do you think you'd be doing if you weren't a DJ? I'd be. Uh, I really enjoy pole dancing. Uh, I'd be a, a male stripper. <laughs> uh, but you know, like for for you know. Uh, Maybe like transgender or well, I, I'm just like I'm midgets. I'm in the, I'm in this little people a lot, so maybe just like open a little people uh, strip club where I would dance. Uh, give me a quick story. Yeah. Give me a quick a quick uh, bit about a party or an event that you thought was really gone off like a real positive. Like wow, that was a sick party for the last maybe year or two. You know what? Uh, let's see. What was a good one in the last year or two? I think in the last year or two. Well, probably two, what was it, two years ago? What was the Love Parade? Two years ago. No, that was, yeah, two years ago. The one here, the, this one was really good, but the sound system kept cutting out on my particular stage when I played. Now, two years ago when I played, it was the first Love Parade. It was unbelievable because literally, uh, you know, here in San Francisco, there's like 30,000 people and everybody's crowded around this uh, semi. And, you know, I'm just playing the drum and everybody's on dancing and this thing is shaking so bad that I'm literally having to hold on to the railings while it's going back and forth. A lot of the DJs couldn't even play because a lot of, back then most were playing records. I always happened to play, I always carried a lot of CDs. So they, they strapped the CD players down to the turntables and literally this thing is just going crazy. I mean, you can check it out on the website, there's still footage of it, but that was just an amazing moment just to have that much energy and that much, people were just ready to go crazy. And, uh, you know, it, in a beautiful day in San Francisco, right on the waterfront. It was just great. And then later at that night, what, I played, I played at uh, Kelly's Mission Rock and uh, ended up playing from, I, I guess, 2 in the morning until sunrise right on the, on the outdoor pier. And I'll never forget the sun coming up and just people wrapped all the way around the railing. Uh, sunrise sets are some of my favorite because then you get to play those beautiful vocals and those great melodies. And So I won't forget that moment. That was great. Right on. <laughs> This is my bodyguard, Scott, by the way. As you can see, he's keeping real close to proximity. Don't try anything. Watching the umbrella. <laughs> So here's the thing, this is my little rant. What I get sick of is all these product placements getting in the way of dance music. It's about dancing, right? It's not about pushing your product or anything like that, okay? I wouldn't do that. And that's the thing, it's like, no one should be doing that, you know? Just keep it pure, keep it pure. I'll see you guys later. Should I let you sit up in front of the right way now? <laughs>